on Countdown, you'll see for the first time new songs by Men at Work and The Angels. And Molly talks exclusively to David Bowie. Now, let's get into the spirit got lost of things with a new one for the metals. Um, I think <laughs> what I really think about this is that um, I just do what I want to do. Stay tuned for David Bowie exclusively in Humdrum. Here As promised from last week, we did do the interview with David Bowie. It's a world exclusive. I'd like to thank the Navy for giving us the, um, the location scene. It was in fact a Garden Island in Sydney. So here it is, the David Bowie interview. Well, David, welcome back to Australia and welcome to Countdown. Uh, it's been a long time between drinks of coming to Australia. I've yeah. seen you a few times since then. Uh, what can we expect now from David Bowie? Uh, we've waited in anticipation for another album. Yes. Uh, well, over this coming year, there's, there's, there's these real kinds of stuff coming out. Uh, it's a loaded year. I've got um, two films coming out. One, The Hunger, with Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon. Uh, one called Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, which I made with Tom Conti and Jack Thompson. Right. Uh, for Oshima, the Japanese director. I've got an album coming out at the end of this month called Let's Dance. And a single from that called Let's Dance. Uh, well, tour coming to these here waters. Right. Well, let's send it back uh, onto the rock and roll side of it first off, which is with the album. Yeah. Uh, you must be aware, and I, I've, I've brought this up in a couple of interviews, of where you are still sort of the leader as far as fashion and music, where a lot of people have, are having hit records now, have been influenced by you. Uh, is there any pressure on you when you have to come down and make a decision to do a new album? No, I've, I've always written to please myself. Um, so whatever seems to be happening around me is, is uh, becomes sort of a pleasant background, really. It's right. the, the music that I'm, I've written for the new album. Is, uh, I've gone back to a lot of the R&B things that I used to listen to. Right. Well, I mean, I've heard a couple of the tracks. Yeah. And I look at it, sort of, if you have to put it into categories, which I guess journalists do, uh, of saying that it's, to me, very New York. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And with Niall as the producer, yeah. obviously had a fair amount of influence on it. Yeah. Did New York have an influence on, on you writing the songs? Yeah, I mean, I wanted specifically an R&B kind of sound. The best place would, would either have been Chicago or uh, Detroit or New York. And as a, most of the musician friends that I work with live in New York, I, I settled on that. Now, the title track is called Let's Dance, yeah. which is a very danceable track. Yeah. Uh, when and where did you write that? Uh, again, it, the, <clears throat> in fact, the, lyrically, the, the, the thing has... Uh, uh, a lot more to do with heroes than it has to do with a disco uh, lyric song. There's a desperation behind the lyric, and it's almost a sort of a last dance. It was going to be called Last Dance at uh, one time, but it changed to Let's Dance. That, that came out of... I uh, um, can't remember where I was when I wrote that. I think that was in Switzerland, of all places. Right. But I buried myself away to write this album. I wrote it very quickly as well. Oh, that's better. Come on, come all this way, get a suntan. It's a cloudy day. It is a cloudy day. It's been hot earlier on, though. But getting back to the film clip of Let's Dance, yeah. what possessed you then to come to Australia to do your two promotional film clips for the Let's Dance album? Um, it's because of the sun. Right. <laughs> I think more, more directly, the, the, the subject matter of the promo clip, I decided to make some kind of observation, um, social observation. And I wanted to work with... Uh, a, high, a highly developed technical society, right. technological society, uh, which for me was, um, uh, Sydney had a good, and it's new as well, it's much newer than the, the American feel. Already the American city seemed jaded to a certain extent. Right, now, and a very old culture in juxtaposition. Well, you've done China Girl out here. Yeah. And you've also done Let's Dance. So yeah. what can we expect, not knowing, I've heard the track, but not knowing what vision we can... Uh, I think it's a, it's a lot more <clears throat> straightforward than anything I've done for a long time. It's, it's not so concerned with uh, juxtaposing surreal images together. Well, right. um, it's a very direct statement about uh, uh, integration of one culture with another. Well, the tracks I've heard of Let, Let's Dance, I think are fantastic. Thank you this very much. This is the, uh, the single cover, which you, I don't know if you've seen or not. I but, have not. Um, yeah. Congratulations, Thank and you. I think the China Girl should be the second single. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Very good.
Okay, well, that's only part of the interview we did with David. We, in fact, spent over 30 minutes with him, and we hope to have that as a complete uh, special in the very near future, so watch out for it. All right, I'll let the man himself present his own song. Here is Mr. David Bowie. Hi, this is David Bowie, and here's a video interpretation of a new song that I've written called Let's Dance, one of the many songs that I'll be singing for you on tour later this year. Seen a true superstar, David Bowie, in special, right after the late news. Tonight in Rock Arena, David Bowie. After something in the order of two-year break and several changes in his life, including a move from New York to Switzerland, plus a new $18 million recording contract with EMI, David Bowie is back. 36 years old and still looking as if he's 26, his serious moonlight tour of the world got underway in May and will play 90 cities in Germany, France, Belgium, Holland, Scandinavia, Britain, the United States, Japan and Australia before coming to a close in September. The tour has followed the release of Bowie's latest album, this one you must have seen by now, called Let's Dance, and sees Bowie playing a show of greatest hits from all stages of his 17-year career. As you probably know, in February, Bowie became or came to Australia to make videos uh, for two tracks from his new Let's Dance album, including the title song and China Girl. And while he was here, Countdown's Molly Meldrum talked with Bowie about his new style of music and his move into acting both on stage and screen. It's this interview that is our feature tonight. What can we expect now from David Bowie? Uh, we've waited in anticipation for another album. Yes. Uh, well, over this coming year, there's, there's, there's these real kinds of stuff coming out. Uh, it's a loaded year. I've got um, two films coming out. One, The Hunger, with Catherine Deneuve and Susan Sarandon. Uh, one called Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, which I made with Tom Conti and Jack Thompson. Right. Uh, but Oshima, the Japanese director. I've got an album coming out at the end of this month called Let's Dance. And a single from that called Let's Dance. Uh, that tour coming to these here waters. Is there any pressure on you when you have to come down and make a decision to do a new album? Of what to put on it? Of that you are, that people are going to look through you, David Bowie, through a microscope? No, I've, I've always written to please myself. Um, so whatever seems to be happening around me is, is uh, becomes sort of a pleasant background, really. It's right. the, the music that I'm, I've written for the new album is, uh, I've gone back to a lot of the R&B things that I used to listen to. Right. Uh, I was also interested in the idea of using an American guitarist that I saw playing in a, a jazz festival in Switzerland called Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, uh, he's a Texan and plays with an out-and-out -out blues band. He mm. plays with B.B. King, Elmore James kind of stuff. So there's, it, there's a tad of that feel on it. Well, I mean, I've heard a couple of the tracks, yeah. and I look at it sort of, if you have to put it into categories, which I guess journalists do, uh, of saying that it's, to me, very New York. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And with Niall as the producer, yeah. obviously he had a fair amount of influence on it. Yeah. Did New York have an influence on, on you writing the songs? Yeah, I mean, I wanted specifically an R&B kind of sound. The best place would, would either have been Chicago or uh, Detroit or New York. And as a, most of the musician friends that I work with live in New York. I, I settled on that rather than Berlin or Paris or whatever. Now, a lot of artists um, don't care to admit that they're making dance records or people uh, the records that people at least can dance to. Yeah. Yet you seem to have no shame in this, even if the title of the album is called Let's Dance. I think there's anything perverse about dancing at all. Not that I know of. Right. I don't know. Now, the title track is called Let's Dance, yeah. which is a very danceable track. Yeah. Uh, when and where did you write that? Uh, again, it, the, <clears throat> in fact, the, lyrically, the, the, the thing has uh, um, uh, a lot more to do with heroes than it has to do with a disco uh, uh, lyric song. There's a desperation behind the lyric, and right. it's almost a sort of a last dance. It was going to be called Last Dance at uh, one time, but it changed it to Let's Dance. I can't remember where I was when I wrote that. I think that was in Switzerland, of all places. Right. But I buried myself away to write this album. I wrote it very quickly as well. Now, one track that I've heard that I think is outstanding is uh, is the track you wrote with one of your old friends, uh, Iggy, Iggy yeah. Bob, uh, called China Girl. Yes. Uh, now, where did that inspire? Where did you both write that one? Then? That was written in Paris. Uh, Jimmy had fallen in love with a Vietnamese girl. Right. Uh, and I always thought it was one of the stronger pieces of material that we'd written. There are a few of his tracks that I feel didn't get enough play. 
and I've always wanted to secretly, I coveted them. Well, I would really like to have sung them myself as well. So now it's a good chance, and uh, Jimmy's heard the stuff and really likes it as well. Right. The collaboration between you two has been, I mean, pretty uh, immense over the years. Yeah. And I remember at one time going to Detroit and seeing you playing well, keyboards for his tour. Yeah. Uh, how much influence has he had on you? Uh, if I any. Th I think nothing really ostensibly. I think more, more in his very hard-headed approach. Right. I think I, I got a more, a better idea of how to be direct from right. his writing and his more his writing and his performance and my performance have little to do with each other as far as stage artists but the uh, the way of writing i think he's very good at cutting through um superfluous lyrics and coming right. straight to the point now with uh, with with all the things that you involve yourself with in the facets of what one would have to term now a show when do we business, fall off this i don't want to fall off this oh. no. is it out now oh um is is the fact that uh you seem to sort of always have a fairly level head about... It's in again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> fairly level head. Yes, I'm a terribly serious chap. About, no, the, each, each um, part of the industry you seem to take on, be it filmmaking. Yes. Um, and record, records. Yes. And even the way you tend to present yourself in fashion. Yes. Uh, it, does it take thought or is it just a whim on your part at times? Um... I think, what I really think about this is that um, I just do what I want to do. Right. I'm not, it, well, I mean, if there's a good film script that's been cut up, then I do it. Right. It's not really, no planning in any of it. Well, the Jack that's Thompson all. film, mm. where it took you to um, way away from New York. Yeah. Uh, what made you, what motivated you to do that film? Uh, Osham was, was very keen on working with me, but it, that thing, in fact, took two years to put together. Uh, um, five years for him, two years for me. He approached me two years before we did it. Once. Oh, that's better. Come on. Come all this way, get a suntan. It's a cloudy day. It is a cloudy day. It's been hot earlier on, though. Yeah. Well, forgetting the film for a moment, getting back to the film clip of Let's Dance, yeah. what possessed you then to come to Australia to do your two promotional film clips for the Let's Dance album? Um, it's because of the sun. Right. <laughs> I think more, more directly, the, the, the subject matter of the promo clip, I decided to make some kind of observation, um, social observation. And I wanted to work with uh, a, high, a highly developed technical society, right. technological society, uh, which for me was um, uh, Sydney had a good, and it's new as well, it's much newer than the, the American feel. Already the American city seemed jaded to a certain extent. Right, now, and a very old culture in juxtaposition. Well, you've done China Girl out here. Yeah. And you've also done Let's Dance. So yeah. what can we expect, not knowing, I've heard the track, but not knowing what vision we can uh, look for. I think it's, to. A, it's a lot more <clears throat> straightforward than anything I've done for a long time. It's, it's not so concerned with uh, juxtaposing surreal images together as making some um, point as a, in a very naive fashion, almost like socio, the uh, Russian socio-realist posters. Right. Um, it's a very direct statement about uh, uh, integration of one culture with another. Uh, with, the, with, with, with the Bowie image, yeah. and you must be the totally Bowie aware image. of it because, well, I've got heaps of I've got of it in my here. pocket here. Well, no, but I've got heaps of books. The public have a Bowie image yeah. for a lot of reasons, be it with your music or with your fashion yeah. or for whatever. Yeah. And we are in an age uh, of where it's um, the video age, I guess. Uh, how interested are you in video uh, as far as presenting rock music is concerned, uh, considering you work in films as well? I think it's uh, unfortunately that the format, the promo format, has taken a lot of the impetus away from the idea of it's, it's got almost classified itself already. It's become a department. Which right. is a shame that it so quickly got locked into itself like that. I think breaking out out of out of that is going to be the next step. Probably by putting together some very uh, strong feature format right. thing, of, say 90 minutes, but a really unusual piece. Is that the new endeavour? I don't think so. I don't, oh, yes, it that is. one there. Yes, it is. I arranged for that a few a couple of hours ago. You've used video uh, from early days, though. Great ship, haven't you? Yes. As far as television is concerned, Crack Factor? Yes. 
Uh, whereas a lot of artists at that stage weren't even interested in doing or using television as any form of medium. I think I just found it easy because for, since the beginning I've always been associated with a lot more theatrical performance. I think at the time people found it uh, a lot more logical to let me free with film right. than maybe they would have done with a lot of other artists. So I possibly I just had the edge on them that way. So it enabled me to get into the idea of using um, celluloid image with rock music right. Right, earlier than most. So what made you go into film as far as wanting to become an actor? Well, that is the same old thing in terms of that I don't really want to do it that so much. It's quite fun. I've not had to. I wanted to see uh, the performance that you were doing of Elephant Man at the time. Uh, that was on a Sunday that I went to see the performance. I had to interview on the Monday uh, about midday. And I was terrified on the fact that I thought, you know, oh, this could be terrible, your performance. And I would sort of perhaps the next day show with my face or something that I really didn't like the performance. I was absolutely blown out. But it was, a, I thought it was Thank a very you. bold mood on your, a move on your part to actually a take on a part. Mood. Move. A bold mood. And mood. That was, that was good. To, uh, to take on a part like that and yeah. put yourself to that raw uh, exposure to a media that can be very cruel at times. Yes, it, yes, it certainly can. Uh, did you enjoy doing that? And why did you do it? Yes, I, th again, th the challenge was just too good to refuse. I mean, uh, I think if you have any pretensions of being an actor, then the stage is the real, the, the real way that you can sort of show that you can cut it. You are so beautiful. How charming, Mr. Merrick. Oh, well, slowly. Please. Please. That's what I burned to say. But I forgot what I burned to say. Couldn't think of anything else. I was so excited. A real charm is always planned, don't you think? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know why I look like this, Mrs. Kendall. My mother was so beautiful. She was knocked down by an elephant in the circus while she was pregnant. Something must have happened, don't you think? It uh, may well have. It may well have. But sometimes I think my head is so big because it is so full of dreams. Because it is. Do you know what happens when dreams cannot get out? No. I don't either. Or something must. to be believable the whole thing's got to be credible otherwise it's within 15 minutes people would just leave well whereas um, with with uh, obviously with, with with film and and with the movie itself because you, there was that amazing uh, makeup done uh, you didn't have that advantage no and I must say that it only took me about two minutes after when you first appeared on stage to forget that you were even David Bowie. Uh, I and think you did take on the part. Yeah, I think mine. it was. It must have been a lot harder for John Hurt um, yeah. to to perform through that makeup because the makeup I think was a hindrance in terms of that it was too set, even though it was thoroughly authentic in terms of what was wrong with uh, John Merrick. Right. Um, it it closed the parameters of how far the imagination could take the the full disease. Right. And when there isn't the makeup there, there's not a you're not constricted to that point of view. You can imagine the maker. You can imagine the, the, the form of the body. You just intimate the position right. of the body. 
and it can seem a lot uglier than actually seeing the real thing, which after a bit didn't have any effect on you anymore, and you sort of just struggled to hear what John Hurt was saying, right. rather than... Well, back to your own performance. Um, you got rave reviews, and I do believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that they wanted you to, in fact, you know, go on a, a tour of America with the show. Yes. And you seem to just close it off like that, which you tend yeah. to do with a lot of the characters that you have built up, with, especially with your, with your music. Yeah. Come, say, Ziggy Stardust. It was like as if yeah. Ziggy Stardust was murdered and put to bed. Yeah. Um, do you ever look back at all these characters that you have, in fact, um, presented to the public? I mean, uh, the John Merrick thing, I mean, it, it, it was okay for that six months that I was doing it on Broadway, but it's, it's kind of um, a, a bit like touring for mammoth periods. Right. I mean, it's just vegetating after a bit. Obviously, you have to do some of the numbers that are from your past history. And when you, if you do something from Ziggy Stardust album, yeah. it is part of Ziggy Stardust. However, the yeah. character oh, sure. has disappeared, yeah. has gone yeah. from your own... Yeah, uh, I think you have to sort of reinterpret the things uh, with, without the character uh, guys behind it. So right. it's, uh, um, maybe the, the definition of the song changes a bit. It will for the next tour. I'll emphasize the different side of the song than I would if I were doing it. Were you sending up um, your public or yourself when you did the song Fashion? Or I don't it think it was the send up so much as it was uh, an observation on how sort of uh, right wing a lot of the fashion stuff is and how zombie like in terms of right. well, following leaders, I guess. I mean, that applies to the left wing as well. I think it's the, the, the very confusing area where, where people will go to the extreme left or the extreme right. And fashion has elements of both in it in terms of mindless, uh, sheep-like sort of following. It wasn't a very particularly interesting observation, right. but it's, it's still effective. If someone comes up to you that is a musician on the brink of breaking it and yeah. asks you advice because they have followed your music, yeah. um, and this is personal, but what sort of advice do you give them? Lord, it's so difficult. I mean, that does tend to change with... I mean, if somebody does do that, I don't try not to flippantly just spout advice out. I mean, I much prefer to hear a demo or hear their songs and see what they're trying to do before I would ever dream of giving advice, being that presumptuous. Um, so it, it's really a personalized thing. Um, it's awfully difficult on a general basis. To, you just yeah. got to be prepared to have a most extraordinary pitfalls and, and disappointments, I think. And if you're prepared to just go through with that, then I guess you're probably really a writer or a performer. When you're at uh, your peak on so many occasions, and, it, and, it, and that image goes, but I mean, the peak is there. Yeah. Have there been any times where you've been in despair at the top, when you have been at your peak, where everyone else is applauding you? Oh, well, yeah, continually up until the middle 70s, I think, right. when I got everything that superficially was what one wanted to get you know right. i mean it's um, i was recognized i made a fair deal of money and uh, seemed to be in a very glamorous position but for me it was absolutely thoroughly empty right and um, when i left that particular way of living uh, i started to appreciate the position i had now that i'm feel just so relaxed about what i do and the, and, and the business that i'm in or position i'm in and to be able to take advantage of situations like taking up really rather wonderful roles in movies right. or having the facilities to be able to direct for little movies myself I mean that's just a luxurious position to be in so the David Bowie of the 80s um, is a very relaxed and I know that very relaxed David Bowie um, so it's just really a matter of you're being able to sort of live your own life without being influenced by what too much around you and actually really sort of uh, uh, reorganizing what i do and trying to make it constructive and positive and um, that's been and will continue to be the hardest thing right um I've, i th i never forget something that john lennon told me we were talking about writing and and i would always admire the way that he, he used to cut through so much of the bullshit, just come straight to the point with what he wanted to say and he said, it's very easy. All you have to do is say what you mean, make it rhyme, put a backbeat to it. Right. And that, I keep coming back to that principle. Did the fame sort of come out like that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it was so easy. John had incredible charisma that, that made you cut through things. Right. I can see the effect that he must have had on McCartney. And I would imagine McCartney sorely misses that now. Right. Uh, Richard Attenborough, and I just watched an interview this morning before I came to do your interview, 
and it was on a, uh, on, a on a great documentary show um, that, that happens here each week. He said that he wasn't interested in making a film to please all the artists around him or looking at an artistic thing. He was there to do a film that was, in his mind, uh, presentable and entertaining. Yeah. Is that David Bowie? No, I, I, unfortunately I vacillate between the two. Right. The one side of me wants to make a very direct social point right. and the other side of me wants to be inter uh, to, to conduct experiments in formalism and, and structure and, right. and experimentation. Well, the tracks I've heard of, Let, Let's Dance, I think are fantastic. Thank you this very much. This is the, uh, the single cover, which you, I don't know if you've seen or not. I but, have not. Um, yeah. Congratulations. Thank and you. I think The China Girl should be the second single. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that was David Bowie's video, the unedited version of China Girl. The song China Girl, co-written with Iggy Pop, and appears on Iggy's album, The Idiot, and apart from that is Bowie's latest single. Iggy Pop has recently toured Australia's East Coast. You may have seen that. Incidentally, the China Girl, New Zealand model G Ling, who I thought came from Sydney, but there you go, is Bowie's new love and is the star in a new Australian movie to be made in September called White Pirates of Chinatown. Bowie's Serious Moonlight Tour has already stormed through Europe and has been a sellout everywhere with some additional concerts being added and with Australia's Ice House, a very successful support band for the British leg. Even the most hardened and cynical critics had to admit that there was little to fought with Bowie as he sang through his past hits, plus his new songs with a superb band supporting him, featuring Carlos Alamore and Old Slick on guitars, Tony Thompson of Schick on drums, Carmen Rogers on bass, Fred Mandel on keyboards, plus a horn section of Steve Elson, Stan Harrison and Lenny Pickett. We should see that line up in Australia in September. Finally, if you're an ardent fan and you think you've got all the books of David Bowie, well, here's a brand new one. This one's called Bowie Picks. Really nice book. It's presented well. It's got comments from David Bowie, plus a whole heap of photographs, a kind of pictorial history. That one should be out very soon. And to leave us tonight, a couple of scenes from The Hunger. It's a movie starring Bowie and Catherine Deneuve, and it's soon to be released in Australia. Good night.